In this video, we're going to look at the advantages to countries of trading with each other. In this video, we're going to be covering terms such as gains from trade and comparative advantage. To start with, we're going to look at two economies. And in each economy, there are two products which are produced. You could imagine in an economy which could only produce two products, you'd want those to be necessities. So we're going to look at food and shelter in the forms of apples and wood as the two products which are made by these two countries. And what we are seeing here are the production possibility frontiers for both of those countries. If you're not sure about what a production possibility frontier is, there's a video about that on this channel. Basically, each one is showing the maximum amount of each product which could be made by the economy at any particular point in time. And it also shows the combinations of products which could be made. So looking at country A, if they put all of their production into the, all of their factors of production into the production of apples, they could make 10 apples. Or if they put all of their production uh, factors into the production of wood, they could make 10 units of wood. Country B could make 18 apples with their, uh, with their inputs, or they could make 6 units of wood. At this stage, both countries would probably want to produce a combination of those two products. So they had some food and some shelter. We're going to say that they're going to uh, move to the center point of each of their production possibility frontiers. For country A, that's going to mean producing five apples and five units of wood. And for country B, that would be nine apples and three units of wood. All of this information can be summarized in this table. Each of the three lines are possibilities of, it, of the country. So country A could produce zero apples or 10 units of wood, and it could produce 10 apples or zero units of wood, but we're going to say that both economies will want to operate on this middle line, where country A uh, consumes five apples and five units of wood, and country B has nine apples and three units of wood. Neither economy could, could consume more than this because all of their resources are being, uh, being used at, at the moment because they're sitting on that production possibility frontier. Neither economy can move beyond that point. To move from producing five apples, country A, uh, to increase the amount of apples they produce, would have to decrease the amount of wood they produce. And country B, in the same way, they're, they're consuming nine apples at the moment. To have more apples, they'll have to decrease their wood from three down to a smaller number. Each economy is giving up a different amount of wood every time they increase the amount of apples that they consume. With their one-to-one -one ratio, because they can produce 10 apples or 10 units of wood at their maximum, country A, for every extra apple that they produce, it costs them one unit of wood. And in the same way, for every one unit of wood they produce, it would cost them one apple. So country A could move up to six apples and they would reduce down to four units of wood. So we'll say down the bottom here that for country A, the opportunity cost of apples is one unit of wood. For country B, in order to increase the amount of apples that they produce, they're going to have to give up less wood than country A would. They'll only have to give up a third of a unit of wood for every apple that they increase their production by. This means that country B is more productive at producing apples than country A is. And we say that they have a comparative advantage in the production of apples. When it comes to producing wood, however, the opportunity cost of increasing wood by one unit for country A is one apple. In country B, however, the opportunity cost of producing an extra unit of wood, they would have to give up three apples 
to increase their wood by one unit. This means that country A is much more productive at producing wood than country B is because the opportunity cost is lower. The amount that they would have to give up in terms of apples is lower for country A than it is for country B. Now gains from trade occur when countries specialise in the production of the good in which they have a comparative advantage. In this case, the comparative advantage for country A would mean producing 10 units of wood. And the comparative advantage for country B would mean if they specialised in the thing which they have a comparative advantage in, which is apples. Doing this on their own is not a good idea because now country A has no food and country B has no shelter. But because they've been able to produce the product which they are specialised in the product which they have a comparative advantage... Now they'll be able to trade and both countries can benefit from this. Originally we said that it would be best if both countries produced at this level here. So country A made, uh, had 5 apples, 5 units of wood. Country B had 9 apples and 3 units of wood. But now we're going to suggest that both countries should specialise in the products in which they have a comparative advantage. That would mean that country A is only going to produce 10 units of wood. They're going to specialise in that, in that commodity. Country B is only going to produce 18 apples. You can probably already see the advantage that's going to happen here. When we operated across that centre line, we had 5 apples being consumed by country A and 9 by country B. That means that before trade, there were 14 apples in total across the two economies being consumed. The total amount of wood was this 5 plus 3. So that meant that we had 8 units of wood. After we, begin, after we begin to specialise, now we're going to have, uh, we can see here, we had 14 apples before, now there's going to be 18 apples. And there's going to be up here 10 units of wood. So before the specialisation, there were only 14 apples, now we can produce 18 apples between the two economies. Before we began specialisation, both economies together produced 8 units of wood, and now they produce 10 units of wood. So now we're going to get the two economies to trade, and they're going to trade by sending half of the production that they've made to the other economy in exchange for half of that economy's production. So that means that the 10 units of wood which country A made, they're now going to send to country B. And country B is going to get... 5 units of wood and country A will keep 5 units of wood. The 18 apples will be traded so country B in exchange for those 5 units of wood will send country A 9 apples and country B will keep 9 apples. So we've summarised in this table here that we've got country A and country B are consuming apples and wood. Before trade, country A had five apples and five wood, and country B had nine apples and three units of wood. Now, country A has gone from five apples and five units of wood to nine apples and five units of wood. So there has been an increase for country A of an increase of four apples. For country B, They've gone from having 9 apples and 3 units of wood to 9 apples and 5 units of wood. So they've got an increase in their economy of 2 units of wood. So by specialising in the production of the products in which they had a comparative advantage, both economies have been able to benefit. So this is where we started. Where each economy is operating on the midpoint of its production possibility frontier, 
but by specialising in the production of the good in which they have a comparative advantage, both economies are able to move beyond their production possibility frontier. So economy A used to operate here at five apples and five units of wood. And they couldn't move beyond this red line, but by specialising in the production of wood and then trading for apples, they've been able to move to this point here, where they produce, were consuming nine apples and five units of wood. The economy B over here, they've, uh, they could have been at uh, nine apples and three units of wood, but by specialising the production of apples and then trading, they've moved to this orange dot, which is outside the production possibility frontier. So there is no way without trade that these economies could be consuming these amounts of products. So the summary of this video is showing that the two economies, by specialising in the production of the product in which they have a comparative advantage, and then trading with the other economy, both economies are able to benefit and move beyond their production possibility frontiers. And that's the, the main thing that we're going to show here. We're just going to have a look at one more concept, and that is by combining the two production possibility frontiers together like this, this was the, the, the furthest that each economy could go. So the line that is 10 apples and 10 wood was country A, and the line that is 18 apples and 6 wood was country B. By working together, by specialising in the production of the products in which they have a comparative advantage and then trading uh, with the other partner, what we're able to do is to create a new uh, production possibility frontier for both economies together. So we have the two individual lines there for each economy, but by combining together, we have a production possibility frontier with trade, and it allows both economies to operate inside this blue line, which is further out than what they could have operated in if they were just stayed within their own production possibility frontier.